This video is part two of my two-part series on performance max optimizations that you need to be running in Google Ads in 2024 and beyond. If you didn't catch part one, don't worry, you don't have to watch it in order. Feel free to watch this video first, then in the link in the description below, you can find a link to part one. In part one, I showed you tips one through five. Today, I'll show you the next five, numbers six to 10, of the performance max optimizations that I run all the time for my Google Ads clients at my agency, Big Flare. I've been running Big Flare for over 10 years now, and we've done more than $100 million in e-commerce revenue for clients during that time, running these exact optimizations. Hang around till the end and you'll see one of the most critical profit boosting campaign segmentations you can implement today. With that said, let's dive into number six on my list. You should extract all your search term data from Performance Max and add those as phrase and or exact match keywords in your search campaigns. To do this, head into your Performance Max campaign. Click on the Insights section, then find this bit here called Consumer Spotlight. Click on View Detailed Report. This is where you'll be able to see all the search terms that people typed into Google to trigger your ads. Set the date range you want, then click to download the terms as a Google Sheet. Open up the sheet. What I like to do at this point is get rid of these title rows, then click the button to automatically add filters, and then order the list in descending order of impressions. There's one little extra trick here. You'll notice when you order by impressions, the ranking comes out a bit wrong. That's because for some reason, when Google creates the sheet for you, it adds this annoying little apostrophe right here. That makes Google Sheets think that this column is a text column, not a number column, which messes up the ordering of it. Highlight the data in the column, then click data, split text to columns. This gets rid of the apostrophe. And now Google Sheets knows this column is data, not text. Now, when you rank in descending order of impressions, it will work properly. There are lots of subtotal rows and duplicates here. Let's get rid of them. Under search terms, click the filter and add a condition for text does not contain dash dash. That gets rid of the subtotal rows. We still have duplicates though. So highlight all your data, then go to data, data cleanup, remove duplicates. Unselect all and then just select column C and click to remove the duplicates. Okay, now we have a list of search terms ranked in descending order of impressions that are triggering our ads in Performance Max. Now what you want to do is go down this list and starting at the top, add these keywords using the exact same spelling into your search campaigns. Hopefully you already have a good campaign and ad group structure set up for your search campaigns. If you have set up your structure well, then for most of the keywords you need to add, you should be able to find an existing ad group to just slot them into. For any keywords that don't have a good existing ad group to add them to, create the ad group. You'll probably have thousands of keywords to add, but you don't need to add them all. Prioritize the list and start just with the high priority ones. That's why we ranked the list in descending order of impressions. Even if you just do the top 10 on the list, which won't take too long, you'll have covered a large chunk of the total impressions. And I consider this to be a weekly process. So if you do the top 10 to 20 this week, and then next week you do the next 10 to 20, and you keep that up, over time, you will capture all the most important terms with the greatest amount of impressions. Okay, so that was the what, but what about the why? Here's why you should be checking your Performance Max search terms report and regularly adding those terms as keywords to search. Doing this will cause the search campaign to get budget priority over Performance Max for the keywords you added to search. Once your standard search campaign gets budget priority for a given keyword, it is guaranteed to show the ad over Performance Max when the keyword is searched and either two of the campaigns could in theory have shown a search ad. And the advantage of this is that once you know that the term will flow through your search campaign rather than your Pmax campaign, you can get much better results with just a little extra effort. That little extra effort involves crafting targeted, high quality ad copy specifically for that keyword, 
then monitoring its quality score and optimizing to get the quality score higher over time. These are two things you cannot do when the search ad is being displayed by your Pmax campaign instead of by your search campaign. And it's why for accounts that my team at Big Flare run, we get on average 50 to 100% higher return on ad spend in search versus Performance Max. For me, Performance Max is a great tool for e-commerce advertisers, but only for the shopping ads. For running search ads, it's still better to run your own campaigns. This weekly optimization ensures that Performance Max will stay in the lane that it is best at, shopping ads, whilst giving you more control and better performance over your search ads. Number seven on the list of Performance Max optimizations is to take the products you really want to push and get more sales of, then create shopping dupes for them. A shopping dupe is where you duplicate the product in your feed, but change the item ID. Once you change the item ID, Google thinks the duplicated item is now a new product. Once Google thinks the duplicated item is a new product, there are a number of different ways you can use this to your advantage. One way I like to use this is to target more keywords. The simplest way to think of it is like this. Your product title in Google Shopping is the same as your keyword targeting. If the keyword is in your title, you are targeting it. If it ain't, you might not be targeting it at all, or you might be getting less of it than you could. So when we create a shopping dupe, we can now use the dupe to test targeting new keywords that weren't able to fit in our original product title. You do get 150 characters of title space in your product titles. In a lot of cases, that's enough to target all the main keywords you need. But in some cases, you want to target more keywords than you can fit in 150 characters, and that is where shopping dupes can come in really handy. Another option for shopping dupes is to use it as a sort of split testing place. For example, your product image has a huge impact on your CTR when it comes to your shopping ads. With shopping dupes, you can use the duplicated item to split test a different product image in your feed and try and increase your click-through rate. When using shopping dupes, just bear in mind one thing. Google collects performance data for your products at the item ID level. Once you create a dupe with a new item ID, the dupe will have zero historical performance data with Google because Google thinks it's a new product. You need to factor that in if using shopping dupes as a place to split test stuff as some of the difference in performance may come from the fact that the duplicated item has no historical data. One way you can counteract that is if using shopping dupes to split test product feed images, before you split test anything, run the shopping dupe item in your Performance Max campaign, but do not make any changes to it yet. Simply duplicate your product in the feed, change the item ID, change nothing else in the feed about your duped item. Then let the dupe run for the next 30 to 60 days gathering data and conversions. After 30 to 60 days, or after it's gathered a good number of conversions, now Google shall have some historical performance data on the product and any split tests you run should be a bit fairer. I'd love to do a walkthrough for you of how to duplicate the item in your feed, then change its item ID. But unfortunately, the steps depend on what feed tool you are using. Some of the free tools might not allow this level of customization, but all the paid tools do to my knowledge. Whichever tool you are using, just remember that the steps are to duplicate the product, change the item ID. After that, either stuff more and different keywords into your duped product title, and then add the product into your Performance Max campaign to run ads on. Or alternatively, use the dupe for split testing, but make sure to warm it up first by advertising it and getting some of the data in there before making any changes. Number eight on the list you should install and use the awesome Performance Max Spend Analysis script by Mike Rhodes. This script will give you hidden insights about where Performance Max is really spending your money. These insights are something you can then use to make better decisions when piloting your Pmax campaign. To get a free copy of the script, if you Google Mike Rhodes Pmax script, then the first thing you should see should be this link to his GitHub here. I'll add a direct link to this in the description below the video too. On this page, you can find the latest version of the script plus instructions on how to install it in your account. Once you've installed it in your account, you will get a report that looks like this. There are many tabs, but I mostly use this tab here called Charts. From here, you will be able to see on a campaign by campaign basis, how much money is being spent on shopping ads, search, display, and video. One way to use this information is to check if you are getting a high percentage of spend on search. 
And if you are, to me that would say you need to be better at doing point number six from this video, extracting search terms and adding them to search. Another super useful way to use this report is when there has been a sudden change in performance and you're trying to figure out why. For example, if your spend suddenly shot up one day but resulted in zero sales, you might check on this report and see that all the spend was on the display network. If you know anything about the Google display network, you will know that that is probably the part of Google's ecosystem that is the most prone to click fraud. So seeing something like that might then lead you down the path of notifying Google of potential click fraud and seeking a refund. A third way you can use this report is to understand what types of creative assets most need optimization. If you see a high percentage of spend and conversions on video, for example, you'd know that making sure sure you have great video creative assets is a priority. By the way, if you would like to get the kinds of results that my team and I at Big Flair got for this client, or even this client, then head on over to the link in the description below. Using the form on that page, you can get in touch with me and schedule in a free PPC strategy session. We'll hop on the phone, discuss your challenges and dive into actionable strategies that you can use to grow your revenue with PPC. Number nine on my list of performance max optimizations, and this one is super critical. Check and fix any disapproved products in your product feed. Products can randomly get disapproved at any time and for a whole host of reasons. Any product that gets disapproved in your feed is a product you could be earning money on, but un. To check for disapproved products, you can do this in the Google Ads interface by heading into your Performance Max campaign, then clicking into Products, then Diagnostics, just like this. But it's better to check this in Google Merchant Center for a more holistic view, especially if you have multiple PMAX campaigns running. Go into Google Merchant Center and go to Products, Diagnostics. From here, you will see a summary of how many disapproved products there are, and if you look lower down, you can see the exact reasons why. A lot of the time, the reason will be easy to fix if you just update some aspect of your feed by following the instructions provided. To see the thing that needs fixing, hover over the question mark right here. There's also usually a learn more link in case you need more information. Click on the view examples option over here to get the exact list of items that are affected by this problem. A lot of the time the issue will be fixed by editing your product feed and so at this point you will probably have to log into your product feed management tool to fix the issue. Fixing disapproved items is absolutely essential but what about these fellas here with the little yellow orange triangle thing? These guys aren't disapproved but they have received a warning. Now, warnings are not absolutely critical to fix like disapprovals are, but depending on the type of warning, you may be getting a bit less performance than you could do. And oftentimes the warnings are quite easy to fix, so you might as well. So I consider fixing warnings as a nice to have. Fixing disapprovals is essential, definitely do that. After you have done that, if you see warnings and if you have some time, then fix these two as it's better to do so. Last on my list, an important performance max optimization you should run is to find unprofitable products and then segment them out to their own campaign to make them profitable. First, you have to know your gross profit margin percentage. Then divide one by that number. Let's say my gross profit margin percentage is 60%. Divide one by 60% or one divided by 0.6 and you get 1.67. That number that you get by dividing one by your gross profit margin percentage is your break even return on ad spend. Any product getting a ROAS lower than that is losing money. So now what you do is head into your PMAX campaign, go to products, then apply a filter and look for products with a return on ad spend below break even. For any products that show up here, that have a significant amount of ad spend and conversions, you should break them out of their current campaign and put them in a new campaign so that you can set a target ROAS specifically for them to get them above the break-even point. I wouldn't do this for products with low ad spend or conversions because if they have low ad spend and conversions, then the data is not significant enough to make a decision on. Performance Max and Google's automated target ROAS bidding does do a good job of setting the CPC bids 
given the information and goals that it has. But one thing it does not have is information about your gross profit margin. And thus, it doesn't know where you break even, and it doesn't know if certain products are actually unprofitable. Its job is to get as much conversion value as possible, as long as the campaign average return on ad spend matches the target you gave it. Some products naturally get a higher ROAS, and some will naturally get a lower one. And as long as the average between the lot is in line with your target, the system will think it's doing a good job. But the products on the lower end of the ROAS spectrum might actually be below your break even point, and the system does not account for that. That's why this happens, and that's why it's important to run this kind of optimization to ensure you are not burning money on certain products. If you've not yet seen part one of this series, then check out the link in the description below this video. And if you liked this video, you'll love my video on how to build a seed mining method campaign structure in Google Ads, which you can find right here. This is my latest strategy for structuring and managing high-performing search campaigns in Google Ads, and you are gonna love it, so see you over on that one in just a minute.